prosperity. And there are the trendsetters, man. So there they are. They're doing the yellow vesties. And here, here, we'll watch a little bit of this. Students across France are protesting against the government's education reforms, forcing over 150 schools to close. In a number of cities, the demonstrations also turned violent. France's education minister has condemned what's happening in the country, including some of the police's actions. Jean-Michel Blanca here was referring to a video that has sparked outrage, showing student protesters on their knees with their hands behind their heads on police orders. He added, though, that the incident does need to be understood in context. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah, you have to understand that in context. The riots do come in the wake of weeks of nationwide protests against fuel price increases and high living costs. Uh, more of these rallies are by the so-called Yellow Vest movement are planned for Saturday. The Yellow Vest riots have seen three deaths and hundreds of injuries nationwide so far. In Paris alone, shop profits dropped by 50% and €4 million Euros of damage was also inflicted. The government has since backed down, promising to scrap its proposed fuel tax. However, it's still introducing exceptional security measures, with visitors to Paris, for example, told to stay away from certain attractions, including the Eiffel Tower. Well, in an interview, the French Prime Minister said that the government will deploy a dozen armoured vehicles to ensure peaceful protests on the streets of Paris. The last time such a measure was taken was 13 years ago. We have information about a great number of individuals who are coming to Paris not to protest peacefully, but to confront, to attack the forces of law. We mobilized an important number of police officers, 89,000 in France overall. This is an exceptional mobilization because we don't want to endanger the Republic. Meanwhile, weeks of protests have taken their toll on the French President Emmanuel Macron, who has seen his approval ratings dive, with more his Charlotte Dubinsky. Another day, another protest here in France as groups buoyed by the government's U-turn on a fuel tax rise feel like the winds are changing and blowing in their favour. Now, as the crisis continues, parties from the left are calling for a vote of no confidence in the French government, the second in months. We see that our government is heading for disaster. It's our collective responsibility to make it stop here and to do something to change the government and the policies. We'll try to convince other members of parliament, aside from ours, to sign this motion of no confidence and vote it through. Touted as France's hope when he was elected last year, he came into office with an approval rating of more than 60%. But he's gone from Jupiter to jeers, with the latest polls showing his popularity has crashed. Labour will be freed. Companies will be supported. Initiative will be encouraged. So this is the result of neoliberalism. So uh, Macron is the neoliberalism savior, and he's implementing austerity. And I'm going to tell you about exactly what's happening in just a second. But let's watch a little bit more of this. As uh, he, again, his uh, the students are rioting because so he came in promising a revolution of such of sorts to revolutionize France society. But the and the changes he's making. People, this is what the results are. And it was the the gas tax was the trigger. It wasn't, that's not, so people are like, oh, we should tax gas because of climate change, global. It's not that, all right? So yes, we should do things to get people to stop using gas. But what they're doing is cutting taxes for the wealthy and then austerity, again, it's austerity. And, this, and the gas tax was just the final straw. Right. And who does that hurt? That hurts people who live in rural areas, smaller towns, have to get back and forth and drive. And so your opponent, by the way, they just had a, a big uh, government push to get people to, to buy diesel cars. They did. Right. So now 60 percent of the cars are diesel. Now they like, oh, no, go to electric. So people don't have they can't they don't have money to start buying new cars. 
So that's one problem with that. Um, but so we're going to get into there's a great article from the Consortium News I'm going to go over, which details exactly what's happening because people think this is all just about a gas tax. Well, those students, they're also upset with the way he's reconfiguring how education works in France. So he's trying to really bring in some big changes, and most of them are austerity and neo. They're all neoliberal. <laughs> I will humbly serve our people. French men and French women who feel forgotten will be better protected. Oh, look how they're protecting them. Look how they're all being protected. So, what's caused the collapse? As well as implementing a vast range of unpopular reforms that have led to him being labeled the president of the rich. So did you know that? That he's being he's being called the president of the rich in France? Did you know that? Do they talk about that in the United States press? Did you know that, Ruby? That how about you, Arno? Did you know that? Macron? I didn't hear that. I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that. Here we go. He's also known for his loose tongue and perceived arrogance. He told army generals, Je suis votre chef. After a dispute over spending cuts, the head of the French armed forces soon quit, and he would be far from the last to abandon Macron's camp. The president even told pensioners that France would be better off if people stopped whining after being harangued by voters worried about pension cuts. So he's implementing this massive austerity pro program. This is what I'm going to go into it in a second, but that's what they're talking about. And he told pensioners, quit whining. <laughs> so again, instead of coming in and doing what you're supposed to do, uh, he's taking it out on the people with no money and no power, the people who are just getting by. And people have had it. So here we go. The only thing we don't have the right to do is complain. The president may have hoped the U-turn on fuel tax hikes would have quelled the anger, but it hasn't. hasn't. It only seems to have intensified it, with truckers, farmers and students now taking their concerns to the streets. Protesters here are calling for Macron to resign. Moi, je considère... I consider Macron to be a president who is against social rights, who is trying to deconstruct the welfare state. He is clearly implementing policies for the rich. He is the president of the rich. We want a president for the poor, a president who prioritizes the common interest. Macron's resignation would be ideal. Parliament's job is to respond to the people's demands. Unfortunately, though, in the National Assembly, where the majority are with Anmarche, the deputies follow orders like sheep. But we are happy because there are deputies who represent the interests of the people, who answer to their demands. Macron, I don't like him a lot, but the problem is that if you want Macron to resign, who are you going to put forward against them? So if you have a good uh, candidate, that's fine, but Macron resign and um, let's see what happens. It's not a great uh, option for me. Macron once penned a book entitled Revolution. There it is. In it, he wrote about the quest to reinvent the French nation. His unpopular policies may just be doing that yeah. as the Yellow Vest movement continues to gain traction. Problem is, this wasn't the revolution the president foresaw nor wanted. Charlotte. So even though they did a U-turn on the gas tax, people are still upset. What? I thought this was all about a gas. No. The gas tax was the trigger. So there's a great article uh, from Diana Johnston, uh, or do you say John Stone? Uh, she's in Paris, and she wrote this, and this was in the uh, Consortium News. Uh, so the gas tax was the last straw in a long series of measures favoring the rich at the expense of the majority of the population. That is why the movement achieved almost instant popularity and support. So this isn't just about the gas tax. This is, well, what's been leading it up to? Well, briefly, uh, what people have been saying to the government is we can't make ends meet. The cost of living keeps going up and our incomes keep going down. We can't take it anymore. The government must stop, think and change course. So just the same thing that's happening in the United States. 80% of workers live paycheck to paycheck in the richest country in the world. 
where Amazon, the richest man in the world, Jeff Bezos, gets billion dollars in tax bonuses, and he's he's worth one hundred and fifty billion dollars himself. <laughs> so the rich get welfare, and everyone else gets to pound sand and tread water. Thirty million Americans still don't have health care. So I saw an article in the New Yorker that's saying, well, these protests in France, a lot of people are trying to say it's because uh, they don't have enough progressive politics like the, the Bernie Sanders people are going to tell you. But that's obviously not the case because they have a universal health care and free college and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but they're trying to take that away right now. That's why people are protesting. They're trying to he's trying to screw the welfare state. That's why they're that's right. So the thing they have, they're protesting now before it's all gone. Whereas in America, we can't even protest and we don't have it. Uh, Macron, Macron, Macron didn't run on the promise to freeze pensions. Recall the yellow vest, but that's what he's doing. But that is what he has done all along with increasing solidarity taxes on pensioners. So this is austerity. This is what happens in Greece. This is austerity happening uh, everywhere, right? Italy, France. And it's on the back of the working back, class. Of course. A significant and recurring complaint concerned the matter of health care. So I'm jumping around this article. So they also, this is, uh, here's, so it's not just the gas tax here, which is what else it is. France has long had the best public health program in the world, but this is being steadily undermined to meet the primary need of capital, profit. So in order to, to put profit so capitalists can make money off of your illness, they're screwing over their health care system right now. In the past few years, there's been a growing government campaign to encourage and finally to oblige, meaning make people, subscribe to a, a mutuella. What that is, a private health insurance, ostensibly to fill in the gaps not covered by France's universal health coverage. So now they're make just like here in the United States, you have to buy something from a capitalist. You have to pay money to a capitalist if you just want to live in America or you get fined. That's the law here. So that's what the, they're doing there. They're making you ob obligatory to buy private health insurance. The gaps can be the 15% that is not covered for ordinary illnesses. Grave illnesses are covered 100% in France. Or for medicines taken off the covered list or for dental work, among other things. So there's a, usually a 15% gap in the coverage that the government gives to people for their health care and what they actually have to get. And so they're making people buy private insurance to cover that. Uh, the gaps to fill expanding along with the cost of subscribing to the Mutil. Uh, in reality, this program sold to the public as modernizing improvement is a gradual move toward privatization of healthcare. Another neoliberal wet dream. So that's happening. Uh, it is a sneaky method of opening the whole field of public health to international financial capital investment. This gambit has not fooled ordinary people and is high on the list of complaints by the Gilets jaunes. So that's the yellow vests. So this is high on their list of complaints. I haven't heard this talked about in Western media. In fact, the only time it was talked about, which was in New Yorker, they poo-pooed this idea that there was more. Rather, the benefits, so, so, so the gas tax. So people go, well, you better tax, tax the gas because of global warming. Well, it would be one thing if they took the taxes that those people have to pay now on their gas and they used it to fund green infrastructure programs. But that's not what they're doing. Rather, these taxes, the benefits are earmarked to balance the budget. What? That is to serve the government debt. The Macronian gas tax is just another austerity measure, along with cutting back public services and selling the family jewels. That is selling potential money makers like Alstom port facilities and Paris airports. So they're doing that neoliberalism crap where they're privatizing and selling off their public spaces. 
They already did. I think they sold Ostrom to General Electric. So, so they're doing this neoliberal wet dream, and people are revolting finally in France over it. They're privatizing public spaces, public utilities, instituting austerity, trying to privatize health care. And then they're not even, the money from the gas tax, they're not even using it to invest in green infrastructure. They're using it to pay down their debt. Why? Because Macron is a tool of the bankers. And that's what the bankers want. That's what the bankers want in Greece. They're getting it. They've wiped out a third of the Greece's GDP already with this austerity. That's why real estate, so you can get it for a song in Greece these days. Jimmy Pills Nil says all of Europe is being destabilized by neoliberals yes. and the far right. They want to privatize all social services. Yes. So this is happening worldwide. So there's going to need to be a worldwide movement of people, workers, together to overthrow this crap. Well, Amazon already was on strike in the UK and in Spain, the Amazon workers. So this, this can happen. It must. This is why cutting expenses and balancing the budget is Macron's obsession, because that's what he was chosen to do by the oligarchy that sponsored his candidacy. Remember who propped up, propped him up was Barack Obama. He didn't prop up the far left candidate. He propped up Macron, the tool of the bankers, the oligarchs. He was chosen. Macron was chosen by the financial oligarchy above all to save the European Union from threatening disintegration caused by the euro. So now this is going to get a little itty bitty bit into the weeds about what's actually happening in the European Union and what the problem is in, in Italy. We were just in Italy. People are the same crap is happening. Neoliberals are trying to screw over and privatize everything there. Same thing happened in Greece. The banks crushed them. In, in instituted austerity, wiped out a third of their GDP. And now people are fleeing Greece and real estate. It's you get it for a song. So here's what, here's what happened. There were these treaties to get everybody to join the European union. So the treaties establishing the European union and above all the common currency, the Euro have created an imbalance between member states, that is unsustainable. Now, we saw the guy who used to be the finance minister from uh, Greece do a TED Talk, and he's just talking about this. He says it's important to save the European Union, but it has to be massively restructured because of this. The irony is that the previous French government, starting with Mitterrand, are largely responsible for the state of affairs. How? Well, in a desperate and technically ill-examined effort to keep newly unified Germany from becoming the dominant power in Europe, the French insisted on binding Germany to France by a common currency. So it was the French who demanded this common currency euro because they, they thought that would be a good uh, break on the power of Germany's uh, economy. That's what they thought. Reluctantly, the Germans agreed to the euro, but only on Germans' terms. The result is that Germany has become the unwilling creditor of equally unwilling Eastern uh, European Union member states, Italy, Spain, Portugal, and of course, Greece. So now Germany has become the unwilling creditor of these countries, and the final gap between Germany and its southern neighbors keeps expanding, which causes ill will on all sides. Germany doesn't want to share economic power with states it considers irresponsible spendthrifts, which would be all these states. Italy, Spain, Portugal, and of course Greece. And now, well, look at France. So Macron's mission is to show Germany that France, despite its flagging economy, 
is responsible by how do you show the German banks that you're responsible by squeezing the population in order to pay interest on the debt, just like what the IMF does to all these struggling countries. They come in, they load them up with debt and then demand austerity to pay it back. And that's what France is doing right now. Look, we're going to we're going to do austerity. We're going to cut all this stuff. We're going to be good in, in the eyes of banks. Macron's idea is that the politicians in Berlin and the bankers in Frankfurt will be so impressed that they will turn around and say, well done, Emmanuel. We are ready to throw our wealth into a common pot for the benefit of the 27 member states. And that is why Macron will stop at nothing to balance the budget to make the Germans love him. So far, the Macron magic is not working on the Germans, and it's driving his own people into the streets. Saturday. So so that's so now, you know, the backstory. So that's the economic problem. And Macron's big solution is to institute austerity. And the French aren't taking it. And the gas tax was just the trigger. And again, all those people saying, you know, who are climate uh, aware, I get it. And they're environmentalists. They're like, yeah, but we should. Ta I get it. But you got to do it in a way where at least you take that money you're taxing them and invest it back in their own economies with the green projects. They're not doing that. You have to set up systems where those people can get uh, transportation. Otherwise, they don't have that. So. So now here's a brief history of what's been going on with the protests. On Saturday, November 17th, demonstrators were peaceful, but resented the heavy to uh, tear gas attacks. So that's what happened when they were peaceful. They got big tear gas attacks. So on November 25th, things got a bit rougher. And on Saturday, December 1st, all hell broke loose. With no leaders and no service d'or, militants assigned to protect the demonstrators from attacks, pro provocations, and infiltration... It was inevitable that casseurs or smashers got into the act and started smashing things, looting shops and setting fires to trash cans, cars and even buildings. Not only in Paris, but all over France, from Marseille to Brest, from Toulouse to Strasbourg, in the remote town of Puy and Puy and Valais, known for its chapel perched on a rock and its traditional lace making, the prefecture, National Government Authority, was set on fire. So this is all over the country. These protests, the violent protests, was happening. Tourist arrivals are canceled. And fancy restaurants are emptied and department stores fear for their Christmas windows. The economic damages are enormous because of these yellow vest protests. So you see all the unrest and chaos that's happening in this country all over the place. Violence. Can't they protest after Christmas, Jimmy? Right. Also, you see what's happening. And yet. And yet support for the yellow vest remains mm -hmm. high. probably because people are able to distinguish between those grieved citizens and the vandals who love to wreak destruction for its own sake. So what, so what they're saying is the people of France know that the yellow vests have legitimate grievances of their government and that, yeah, there's going to be some hoodlums who smash stuff. That doesn't represent the group, and it doesn't negate their grievances that there's some violent uh, uh, ne'er do wells, e evildoers. <laughs> On Monday, there were suddenly fresh riots in the troubled suburb of Cologne, uh, the uh, suburbs that Cologne warned about as he retreated to Lyons. So on Monday, there were suddenly fresh riots in the troubled suburbs that Cologne warned about as he retreated to Lyons. So this was a new front for the national police whose representatives let it be known that all this was getting to be a bit too much for them to cope with. Announcing a state emergency, a state of emergency is likely not to solve anything. So the people getting some power in France. 
They're overwhelming. There's more more people than police. Isn't that something? Yes. Macron is in a is is a bubble that has burst. The legitimacy of his authority is very much in question. Yet he was elected in 2017 for a five year term. And his party holds a large majority in parliament that makes his destitution almost impossible. And so this is how they end. Uh, she ends the uh, the article, which is it gets a very long article. I'm just showing you actually just a, maybe not even a quarter of it. It's amazingly dense with great information. Um, but here how here's how she concludes the article. She says, for some two or three hundred years, for some two or three hundred years, people people one could call left hoped that popular movements would lead to changes for the better. Today, many leftists seem terrified of popular movements for change. Convinced populism must lead to fascism. This attitude is one of many factors indicating that changes ahead will not be led by the left as it exists today. Those who fear change will not be there to help make it happen. But change is inevitable. And it need not be for the worse. So change is coming. And she's saying the, you know, the usual left leaders are afraid of it. And they're going to be left behind. Uh, and they should help make sure the change is good because it could end up being for the bad. Change is coming. So it's time to make sure the change that happens is the change you want. But this is what, so they're doing it right now. So I told you we're going to have to get in the streets before they give us Medicare for all. And they are denying it to us. Nancy Pelosi is going to deny you Medicare for all. They're not going to end the wars. They're not going to give you free college. They're not going to end, uh, they're not going to give you a living wage. And, and it's going to take action in the streets. But it, that's going to have to happen all across Europe. Some people, we met a guy in uh, Antonis who's from Greece. I was thinking about who, who moved to Rome, who lives there now and um, gives tours. Uh, teaches you how to take better pictures in, uh, in Rome. And he was just talking about how much, you know, the pensioners were suffering mm -hmm. and how much families were suffering and how um, they're losing, you know, they're losing their their wellness it's completely happening, in that country. It's happening everywhere. It's not just in the United States where everybody's treading water and but they're trying to do it. So they look at them trying to privatize their health care, screwing people over their pensioners. And uh Again, they tax the people. They don't even use the taxes for Green New Deals that they can invest back into the... No, they're not. They're just giving it to bankers. So when they say they're using it to pay off their debt, they're just using, giving it to bankers. And that's why, you know, every time I hear people say, oh, you know, our welfare system or, you know, those people on welfare, it's easy to demonize somebody who's struggling. Oh, yeah. You know, that's always... That's what I always say. Oh, the people... Oh, those fat cats at the bottom. <laughs> Oh, the people who have no money and no power, they're the ones who are really screwing things up. I mean, that's what that are. So that's what rich people do, right? Or there's that uh, there's that uh, clever saying that I've seen on T-shirts. Uh, it says Fox News, uh, billionaires paying millionaires to tell uh, middle class people to blame poor people or something like that. That's, that's the gist of the quote. Right. But that's all news. That's not just Fox News. That's all news. That's MSNBC. Do you remember they weren't even allowed to cover Bernie? Do you remember this? And so what does that tell you? That means they all went along with it. That means anybody who's there went along with it. They're, they weren't allowed to be against the Iraq war. And if you were, they fired you. They fired Jesse Ventura. They fired Phil Donahue. And so everybody there... Is is they let go of has Ed stayed Schultz. in? They they fired Ed Schultz, so everybody who's still there stays inside the parameters set up by Comcast, which is the oligarchs. So and why? Because the oligarchs can make money off of pretend lefties too. 
hey, there's a lot of money to be made off of people who consider themselves liberal. Let's make some money off them without actually doing anything to change the status quo. So they'll cover Hillary because she's status quo corporatist, but they won't cover Bernie. And if they do, they'll cover him dishonestly. Just like the Washington Post, 16 negative stories in 16 hours. Uh, Trump is a good distraction for the establishment. So that's what's happening in France, and that's what's got to happen here. And that's what's going to have to happen if we want anything to happen here. Uh, Barack Obama has proven that the left is not, the Democratic Party is not going to save us from climate change. They're not going to save us from the oligarchs, from the bankers, from the military industrial complex, from the predatory capitalists. They are the predatory capitalists. The reason why Nancy Pelosi isn't screaming about Medicare for all at the top of her lungs is because she's bought by the people who don't want it. That's who she serves. She's she's a member of their class. She's not a member of your class. She's a member of their class. Our next live Jimmy Dore show is February 1st in Burbank, California. Go to jimmydorecomedy.com for a list of all our live shows. And please become a premium member if you can. Become a patron. It's the way we support this show because they're coming at us. And we give you bonus. We give you hours of bonus material every week. Check it out. Become a patron. And if you can, make sure you're still subscribed. They unsubscribe people every day. I know it sounds crazy. It only takes a second. Please make sure and click that bell when you subscribe so they'll send you a notice. When